Welcome back. Let's pick up right where we left off. In the last lesson, we've passed through this email into the query program of our web application. Let's grab this now in our login form. So we're going to create an index.js file. In the index.html, just create a script tag. We'll reference our index.js file. We'll do a quick test to see if this is working. So on our login page, we can just inspect the console. You can see that we have a test there, so that's working fine. So in our index.js now, we can make use of this window.onload uh, property again. We can assign it a function where we can run some of our code. And the way we're going to try and take that value is we're going to create this variable called URL params. And we can make use of this, this class that's available to us in JavaScript called URL search params. All we need to do is pass in window.location.search. And then that's going to then strip the, the parameters for us. So we can just put a debugger here and we can take a look at this. On the login page, as we press save there, you'll see that this is going to, to come back with absolutely nothing. If we head on over to our register page and we fill out our form again and hit our API, we're going to hit register continue with our flow of our, of our app and we'll see the, the email is there. And then if we inspect this, you'll see that the size is one. And so there's definitely something in there. And there's a whole lot of functions available to us on this on this prototype class, which uh, we can make use of this get to, to get a specific query parameter. So let's just kill that breakpoint there and continue on with our, our JavaScript code. So we can just say, if there are no URL params, so if there's nothing in there, we know that this is just a, a normal landing on, on the login page. It's not coming from the register. There are other ways we can do some other checks to see if it is coming from the register page, but I think this will do for now. Now, and then we want to get the email from the URL params. Then we'll use that get, and then we'll just reference the key that we're looking for. And then that should give us the email. And then very simply, we can say if we do have an email, we can grab a hold of that email input by using the document.get element by ID. And then that's going to be email. And then the last step then is to attach that value that we're getting from the query parameters uh, into the value of this input. And then we'll just assign that to email. And then that should give us what we're looking for. And you can see as we, we click save, it actually does the work for us because that email was appended on there. But let's just do some more tests. So I've got a, a clean login form here. If I, I refresh the page, uh, that just works as it usually does. If we go on and register, to test this out and we continue with our breakpoint, you can see that the, the user has now been redirected to the login and the email address has been appended into this input. So that's looking good. The last thing I wanted to do in this lesson was just make the, the register flow a little bit easier for the user. And so in the, the register.js, going to give us some more space to work with. What I want to do is when a successful registration has happened, I want to remove this form and just replace it with a message. And then let's just put a timeout on this redirect uh, just to kind of inform the user that like something successful has happened. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to first want to remove this, the, all the elements on this form. So we'll say document query selector. So we'll reference the auth app form and we want to grab hold of that h2 element and then we'll just set the, the style dot display to none and that's just going to remove it from the dom and then we'll do the exact same thing for the p tag right at the bottom and the next thing we want to do is is get a hold of this form and we'll do that by saying document dot get element by id and that's going to be this register form we can double check if that is indeed the case. Register form, yep. And once we have a hold of that, let's just uh, append a on the fly style here to do a text align and we want to send to the text. And then all we want to do is put a, a replace the inner HTML of this form to, re to replace that whole form with a message that we can now create. We can just use a, a template literal here and we can say, welcome to auth app. And then because we've got access to the name, we can just say name.first. And on a new line, we can say your, your registration was successful. And then lastly, we can just say you will now be redirected to the login page. And let's just put some, some break tags just to, to make it nice and neat. The last thing I want to do is just set a timeout here. So we'll say set timeout. 
And then in the, the body of the, the handler or the callback of that set timeout, let's just move this piece of logic which redirects the user. And then we'll just wait, let's say 4,000 milliseconds, so four seconds, and clean up our code a little bit. And hopefully this works in one go. Let's take a look and test it out. Just to, to remind you, we're doing some work to, to remove some of the normal register form, and then we're going to replace it with a message and then redirect the user after a certain amount of time. So let's test this out. We'll fill out our form again. Yeah, we can hit register. We're going to hit our breakpoint. Let's see what happens. You can see at this point in time, we do get a, a reference to welcome to the auth app, John. Uh, we can see that that names come through. Your registration was successful with a small typo, and then you'll now be re redirected to the login page. So if I, I click continue here, after about four seconds, the user will then be kicked back to the login page and the email address is there. So I think that's some really good work so far. We can just fix that typo there and instead of four seconds let's just make it three let's take a short break here because we've done some really good work we've done a full integration of our register endpoint we've done a little refactor to make sure that only the information we really and absolutely need back on that register endpoint we've done that work in our api we've implemented the kind of user experience that we wanted and now we've got this register endpoint working end to end in our front end application so now that that's done we can start looking at the login as well as the authenticated endpoint and there's going to be some good stuff that we're going to go through in there so looking forward to seeing you over there cheers for now